Hello everyone, my name is Brad Langdell and I want to talk to you today a little bit about forces and free body diagrams and how to make them and what they are and what they look like. So here, let's start. So what's a free body diagram? A free body diagram is just a diagram that shows all the forces acting on an object. So what do you need to know about forces? They're vectors. That means they have magnitude, it means they have direction, and you can break them apart into X and Y components just like we did back in the first unit. You can also move your vectors around after you've drawn them out because sometimes that helps you to solve a problem. So just because you draw them in one spot doesn't mean you have to leave them there the whole time. Let's do some examples. So here I've got a free body diagram example. It's just a box on a line. It's a box is at rest on a horizontal surface. Now that word at rest means a lot. It means that it's not speeding up or slowing down. So there's still forces acting on it though, which is sort of weird. You'd think that if there's forces on an object, it has to be moving. That's not always the case. So let's put some forces in. Uh, the first force, I start off here with the force of gravity. Uh, pointing down towards the center of the earth, nice and easy. Now if that was the only force acting on the box, it would have to accelerate down. That's Newton's second law. So there must be a balancing force, uh, and this is called the normal force. So Fn stands for normal force. Uh, that force is called the normal force because of the fact that it is at a right angle to the surface. Here, I can even put it down against the surface if you want. Uh, so you get a normal force when you're on a nice surface, like a tabletop or the ground or something like that. And that is the force which counteracts gravity, keeps the object from falling down. So there we go. There's only two forces on that box. And because in total those forces add up to nothing, we can say that the net force acting here is zero. So our net force is zero, so we get uniform motion. All right, let's take a look at another situation where something's moving, but it still has a net force of zero. Here we've got a car. We're gonna make the free body diagram and it's moving with uniform motion. Again, that, that means something. We have to read that word carefully. And it's on a horizontal uh, frictionless surface. So well, what do we have happening here? Well, it was already moving. It's got a force of gravity acting on it. And just like before, it'll have a normal force acting on it as well. There's no friction, so I don't have to put that force in. So there's no force needed to keep the car moving as well. Uh, if it's already going with uniform motion, then that's it. It'll continue going with uniform motion forever until something like a net force acts on it to slow it down and stop it. So those two diagrams are the same, whether you've got an object moving with uniform motion or um, uh, it, it's at rest. What about something that's speeding up or slowing down? Okay, here's a one dimensional example for a free body diagram of an object that's speeding up. Uh, sorry, an object that's slowing down. We've got a kid being pulled by a sled rope and through the deep snow. And as the rope pulls the sled, it's gonna slow down. Okay, let's make a free body diagram. I got a force of gravity pulling down on this kid. I also have a normal force pulling up on the kid, same as before. And those two forces are balanced, which means that they'll have the same magnitude, opposite directions, and there'll be no net force overall upwards or downwards vertically in the y dimension on the kid. So the kid won't accelerate up or down. There's also a force here from the rope and we have a name for that. We call that force from a rope, force of tension. And I use FT to symbolize that. FT is force of tension. And uh, there's another force slowing the kid down. And I'm thinking I'm gonna call that the force of friction. Now friction is going to try to slow the object, in this case, the sled down. So I'm gonna have it going in the opposite direction as the sled's movement. And I'm gonna make it a little bit uh, bigger. I want it bigger than the force of tension. If you're wondering why do we want that force of friction larger than the force of tension, it's all because of this keyword, slows down. That phrase tells us that there has to be an imbalance in forces. There's an acceleration. And you get that whenever there's one force bigger than the other. Now in this case, the forces we're looking at are the force of friction and the force of tension. They're the two forces that are gonna cause that guy to slow down because they're collinear forces, they're both in the X direction, and the force of friction is bigger than the force of tension. So as the sledder moves forwards, he slows down. Let's look at another example where we have some collinear forces uh, causing acceleration. Here we have a crane lowering a box and it is going to slow down as it drops. All right, well our box does a force of gravity acting on it, not bad. And the force of uh, tension is also acting up on this box. I'm not gonna put a normal force on the box because it's not resting against a surface. This box is hanging in the air, so it doesn't get a normal force. 
But if this was the free body diagram, then my crane wouldn't slow down. It would keep going at the same speed the whole time. So I'm going to make this force of tension a little larger than the force of gravity. All right, so now the force of tension going upwards while the force of gravity goes downwards means that this box is slowing down. There's more force pulling up on it than there is going downwards, pulling down on it. So notice how we're careful about what the uh, magnitudes of our vectors look like. We're gonna make some of them bigger, some of them smaller based on the wording in the scenario. Here is an example of a 2D situation. So now we've got that sledder again, but he's being pulled with a force of 15 newtons at 30 degrees. So what does that look like? How is this gonna change things? Uh, well, it's not gonna change anything with our force of gravity, really. And at this point in time, it's not gonna change much with our normal force either. But it is gonna change what our force of tension looks like. So now I'm gonna make that force of tension go at an angle. That angle would be 35 degrees. If I was to kind of measure it in here, it would be 35 degrees from the positive x-axis right in there. There's my angle theta. Now there's still a force of friction pulling back on this guy, so we can put that in as well. We don't have a lot of info in terms of whether he's accelerating or decelerating, but we'll eventually be able to figure that out. Eventually we'll learn how to add all these vectors together to figure out whether this guy's accelerating or not, but that'll be in another video later on. So this shows us that we can have free body diagrams where you have forces at vector, uh, vectors at angles. And uh, one of the things we can start to do with these eventually is we can move these around to sort of make them into triangles or other shapes that are more helpful. Here's an example of, of that. All right, let's take a look at this one here. Uh, now we've got another free body diagram, but this time we've got two dimensional forces that we're gonna see if we can kind of put here into a different shape. So I've got a force of uh, 750 Newtons north, there we go, that looks pretty good. 500 Newtons uh, west. So I don't know, I'll use this green one here maybe. Uh, I don't really have names for these forces. Maybe these are both applied forces. I guess I could put that in there if you wanted to. Uh, from two different, you know, maybe trucks or something that are, are pulling this stuck truck out. All right, so that might be your sort of free body diagram for that. Now, because in this case we have like a, a bird's eye view, we're looking down at the truck. I'm not gonna include the normal force and force of gravity because I'm kind of looking at this from above. So I couldn't see that force of gravity vector going into the page or the normal force coming out of the page. So that's kind of my free body diagram. Um, other than I need to adjust the, the sizes a bit, I gotta make that 500 Newton west vector a little bit smaller. But watch what I can do here. Uh, I can also now kind of take those same vectors and I can just move them around. So what if I just kind of took those vectors and redrew them over here? See what I could do? I could end up having a free body diagram changing into a vector diagram. And I could go and start to think about what the net force would look like on this truck. Because the truck wouldn't just go up and it wouldn't just go north uh, and, and west. It would have a, a net force acting on it north and west. So this is an idea we're going to work on when we solve problems with net force diagrams is we're going to draw out these pictures, um, our, net, our free body diagrams, but then we're going to take those vectors, we're going to rearrange them into shapes so we can start to do some math and solve things with them. Uh, so for more on that, check out some more of the videos on my YouTube channel or check out ldindustries.ca.